Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie Channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about a sexual reproduction. This will be the second quarter topic and learning competency number 7. This lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to describe what is a sexual reproduction The second one is to classify organisms according to their modes of a sexual reproduction And the third one is to realize the importance of reproduction of producing new individuals through a sexual reproduction by answering the lesson activity in activating prior knowledge, the teacher will ask the following question. to asexual and sexual. Many kinds of plants and lower forms of animals produce new individuals by asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is the creation of new organism from a single parent without combination of gametes. Therefore, the parent and the resulting offspring have the same genes and this is the reason why they have the same traits. In other words, the parent and the offspring are identical to each other. A sexual reproduction requires less energy since no mating is needed but can produce many offspring at one reproductive cycle. Below are the tables showing the different modes of a sexual reproduction. The first one is the spore formation. When a parent plant produces hundreds of tiny spores, which can grow into new plants. When the spore case opens, the tiny spores are released and may be carried by the wind or water. Once the spore lands on favorable environment, it develops into a new organism. Example for this are bread mold and fern. Another modes of a sexual reproduction is the budding. When an outgrowth called the bud grows and develops from the parent's animal would eventually separate to become a new individual. Example for this are coral, hydra, and yeast. Another mode of asexual reproduction is the fission. It is a mode of asexual reproduction wherein two individuals will form as the parent divides in half. Examples include the sea anemone, bacteria, and amoeba. Another mode of asexual reproduction is the fragmentation. It is where new organism grows from a fragment of the parent. Each of these fragments will develop into matured, fully grown individuals. Examples of fragmentation are the planaria and the nidarians. Another mode of asexual reproduction is the regeneration. It is where the organism replaces or repairs a lost damage of the body. The example of the regenerations are the starfish and the lobster. Vegetative propagation is a mode of asexual reproduction in plants where a new plant can form from the root, stem, or leaf of an already existing plant. 
The following are the different types of vegetative propagation in plants. The first one is the runners or the stolon. It is an above ground stem that grows horizontally along the surface when the stem touches the ground. Buds from the stem, from roots and leaves, and a new plant develops. Example for this are the Bermuda grass and strawberry plant. Another types of vegetative propagation in plants is the rhizomes. It is an underground stem that grows horizontally along the surface. Shoots from buds at nodes of the stem develop into a new plant. Example for this are the gingers. Another types of vegetative propagation in plants is the tubers. These are enlarged and thicken underground stem with buds or eye. Example of tubers is the potato. Another types of vegetative propagation in plants is the bulb. Bulb has a short underground stem and thick fleshy leaves that are colorless. A bulb can reproduce several smaller bulbs and each of which can grow into a new plant. Example for this are the onions. Another types of vegetative propagation in plants is the corm. Corm is an enlarged, short, underground stem that stores food. Corms resemble bulb but do not have thick or fleshy leaves. New corms develop from the stem of an old corm to produce a new plant. The example of the corm is gabi. Horticulturalists and gardeners will use vegetative propagation methods that plants don't use naturally. These methods involve taking a piece of one parent plant and causing it to regenerate itself into a new plant. One of the types of artificial vegetative propagation in plant is grafting. It has long been used to produce novel varieties of roses, citrus pieces, and other plants. In grafting, two plant species are used. The part of the stem of the desirable plant is grafted into the root plant called the stock. The part that is grafted or attached is called the siyun. In grafting, both are cut at an oblique angle or any angle other than right angle, placed in close contact with each other, and are then held together. The vascular systems of the two plants grow on fuse, forming a graft. After a period of time, the sion starts producing shoots and eventually starts bearing flowers and fruits. Grafting is widely used in viticulture or grape growing and the citrus industry. Another types of artificial vegetative propagation is the cutting. A cutting is a piece that has been cut off a mother plant and then caused to grow into a whole new plant. Often, this involves a piece of stem that is treated with hormones to encourage new roots to form before planting. Sometimes, root cuttings with buds on them will produce new shoots when pressed directly into the soil. Another types of artificial vegetative propagation is the layering. Layering is the method in which a stem attached to the plant is bent and covered with soil. Young stems that can be bent easily without any injury are preferred. Example for this are jasmine and bougainvillea that can propagate this way. For the work example, the students will write the modes of a sexual reproduction and a short description of the students will do the project-based learning, which is the scrapbook making.